Hello, my friends, and welcome back to PlayStation Underground. I am joined by James from Insomniac, and we are playing Ratchet & Clank, which is coming to PS4 on April 12th. Depending on when you're listening, you're watching this. That could be really soon or now. Yeah, it's, it's so right welcome. upon us. We're, like, <laughs> we're, when we're recording this, it's really soon I know. already. So is, the, we'll is the studio, like the excitement level, is it building? Are you guys feeling good? Are you relieved? Yeah, it's kind of insane because we've honestly been working on this for so long. Uh, the film has taken, you know, several years. The game has taken a lot of time, too. And it's just kind of a relief to finally have it out there and actually have Ratchet on the PlayStation 4 for the first time. So... And it's so gorgeous. I mean, I you know, you and I have talked already, and I've I've I don't go back with Ratchet as far as the original days, but I joined in kind of on the future series, and I've been really excited about this game because, you know, this Ratchet and Clank is I I don't want to say a return to form per se, but it's a, a revisiting the origin story of this famous PlayStation duo, and you know, obviously using the power of the PS4 to deliver Insomniacs. Uh, classic gorgeous visuals and great weapon design there's just so much to talk about so kind of walk me through some of the basics yeah so uh you know we had always wanted to make a uh, ratchet and clank movie and so that was kind of where everything uh got kick-started and we had this movie uh this movie happening and oh yeah coming coming, coming to actual Gramercy theaters actual theaters it'll be in theaters on april 29th in north america and coming to a lot of other countries too soon after so we um we had this movie and we knew we wanted to do a game to go along with it in some way and so it took us a little bit of time to kind of figure out what we were going to do and a big thought was well the movie you know is going to introduce a whole new audience to Ratchet and Clank well let's you know let's do the same thing with the game and let's go back to the origin story like the movie's going to do but we knew we also just didn't want to you know remake the original game and just do like an HD up res right. or something like that we right, knew we right, wanted right. it to be something special for our fans so um, we uh we spent a lot of time kind of basically rebuilding the original game from scratch in a lot of ways, but it's really completely new. If you think back to that 2000. Wait, hold on. I want to let, 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 I want to guess how many times it'll take you to fit this fish. <laughs> I feel like you're ta- trying to concentrate on talking, talking to me at the same time, and you're like, get this freaking fish. I don't know. Actually, I'm, you know what? Let's Here's what I'm going to do. No, here. no, I'm not going to cheat. I'm just going to make him a very easy target. <laughs> so, I'm sorry I totally so interrupted there. you. there. Okay, go back. Go back. Uh, no, so, uh, you know, we kind of knew, uh, uh, you know, oh, and I can even thrust her down here, too. Ooh. Ooh. Classic. But, Underwater ratchet. Yep, as always. Uh so yeah, we knew we wanted to, uh, you know, retell that origin story. But you know, we knew the movie was going to introduce some new plot elements, and so we knew we had to kind of go back. If you think about the 2002 Ratchet and Clank. Um, that was a game that was, you know, very kind of crude in terms of Ratchet standards. If you played it in the HD collection on PS3, Don't say I that. Remember, well, no, crude. but think about it. Like, you know, that was our first time out, and yeah. we iterated a ton since then. So like back then, you couldn't strafe. Uh, mm. The weapons didn't level up. Uh, so, you know, everything was a gadget, actually, technically. I don't think they were even called weapons. Everything were gadgets. So that whole, the enemies are completely different. And uh, so in this game, just, you know, updating it to modern ratchet controls means we basically had to modernize the entire thing to make it all work because there's just no way to, uh, there's no way to make Ratchet and Clank, uh, there's no way to make Ratchet and Clank uh, feel... Like, you, there's no way to make that game, let's just remake that game and make it feel like modern Ratchet and Clank, right. essentially. You, you so you really needed to start from scratch. Right, those enemies, you know, those enemies need to behave. If Ratchet can strafe and, like, shoot normally, the enemies are all com- have to be completely different and have and all the setups have to be reworked. Like, all of that has to be redone. And so then we, and, you know, the movie features weapons from across the series, so we knew the weapon arsenal was going to, you know, do that, but basically be completely different from the weapon arsenal in the first game. And, uh, and so we spent a lot of time kind of figuring out what those elements would be uh, and basically rebuilding everything from scratch. We didn't, like, import the old game or anything like that. We rebuilt all the levels and assets, and um, there's some brand-new planets. There's brand-new weapons and enemies. There's, you know, cutscenes from the... Uh, there's, you know, 60 minutes of new cutscenes, plus there's about wow. 20 minutes of the film footage is in the game as well, so you'll see little bits of the film to tell some key story moments, and really, as a whole, it just feels like... You know, if you're a fan of the series, this will feel really familiar in places. You'll go to planets and locations you remember and have some story elements you remember. But at the same time, it's also going to feel really fresh and new. And that was one of the big keys for us. 
And I feel like the classic question with you guys, which I'm sure you've answered maybe five billion times, is about weapons. It's about like, oh, what are the cool Insomniac style weapons in this game? I see some familiar ones, but there's also, looks. I think you guys are going to be adding a couple new uh, items here and there For as well, sure. Right? So if I, let's see, I, I did buy it, didn't I? Oh, maybe I didn't buy it. Maybe I just bought Mr. Zircon. Um, so we have one that if uh, we get enough bolts, maybe I can buy it before uh, we get done here. And uh, that's called the uh, Pixelator, and that's a brand new weapon for this game. And the Pixelator is uh, just this terrific gun that makes turns everything into old school pixels. And uh, and it's really it's kind of funny because it's actually an idea we had back on the PS3, but it's really hard to make uh, make you know beautiful assets look bad. Uh, exactly. It, it takes a lot of processing power to make, you know, turn them into little boxes and voxels, essentially. So we spent a lot of time working on that, but it turned out really well, and they explode in this, like, shower of pixels, and it's just really fun, and there's all these, like, old-school video game effects with it, and um, it's just something we were really, you know, that we think is really fun, and definitely is, like, a classic... Man, that's embarrassing. Oh, no! <laughs> I keep uh, getting caught on those guys while uh, talking. All right, well, let's do this for real. You, you, you know, focus. You know, the amount of the amount of crap I'm gonna get when this goes out is gonna be unreal. Who knows? Maybe people will celebrate how real of an insight into Ratchet and Clank this is, or we'll just cut it out. Doesn't matter. Oh, well, <laughs> it could be good too. Oh, but I didn't say anything too good where you have to leave it in. No, it's okay. I, I, uh, I'm known for sometimes dying in demos. That's okay. Well, let's let me let me tell you a little bit about one of my Ratchet and Clank experiences, which is flipping the heck out at Ratchet and Clank: A Crack in Time, which I just thought was one of the. It has such an amazing final moments. Just the series of, you know, the story and the action and the final boss battles. I mean, all of it is so good, and I really enjoy it. And also, I'm just going to keep my fingers crossed for. Uh, I think you got it this time. Yeah, I think so too. Um, that was really tight, man. Yeah, it's a tight. You know, it's not, it's oh. not super easy all the time. I think you got it. Oof, that was close. <laughs> I think it said six to seven percent. Yeah, it was pretty much down to like Ratchet was about to run out of breath. See, even Ratchet thought it was close. <sighs> um, Goodness gracious! Crack in Time is probably you know one of my all-time favorite Ratchet games up there with Up Your Arsenal and Going Commando, and I think you probably hear that from a lot of fans. And what's so fun about it is. You know, we were, you know, we've definitely put a lot of like heart in the story over the years, and I think you saw that in the PlayStation 3 games. We really started striving to kind of feel like a Pixar movie, mm -hmm. um, okay. and like so that was something that was uh, really, really important to us. And uh, and that was a game where I feel like we maybe really hit it on the PlayStation 3. Oh, absolutely! And so it's been fun coming back. We have a CG animated movie now, and we're coming back to this game and kind of working on it. Uh, and making this CG animated, you know, making this experience feel like a CG animated movie, but also kind of being able to inject that. Because if you think back to the original game, Ratchet actually was sort of a jerk to Clank in the original Ratchet and Clank, and that's actually not quite, there's a lot of the plot elements from the original game we've kept and stayed the same, but I would say we've softened that a bit because that wasn't really what we wanted. We actually changed voice actors after the first Ratchet game, so James Arnold Taylor has only been Ratchet since going Commando. Mm. So that's kind of actually something cool about this as well. You actually get James Arnold Taylor in the origin story for the first time. Oh, uh, cool. Is, I would have never known. Yeah, it's a fun thing too. And it's also great with the film. We actually were able to keep, um, at least in North America, we were able, they were able to keep keep the voice actors from the game uh, to play the four main character roles, I guess, the four mostly established characters. For the film. Ratchet, Clank, Quark, and Nefarious are all played by the game voice actors. So when you go see that film, uh, you will... Uh, you'll feel right at home. Right, you'll feel right at home. And you may have just seen, we saw a little scene there where we were picking up a Rhino Hollow card. There's kind of this whole Hollow card system in the game where you'll collect these cards and... Um, <clears throat> and if you collect the cards, there's different bonuses and things you can get. And, uh... Ooh, James, are you telling me that there's little mini-games to unlock stuff in this well, game? Well, yeah, you know, the <laughs> Trespasser's classic, but then if you want to get these cards uh, to unlock the Rhino, you're going to have to track down, uh... You have to track down. So there's lots of different cards we can view, and you I'll got just, cards in this. Yeah, game I'll, too. I'll jump into it real quick. There's just some, so you can collect your first hollow card, and you'll as you defeat enemies and do things, you want to you'll get sets, which will open. So I'm gonna open this pack of cards, and 
I've got several weapons, and look, there's a rhino card, and if you collect all of those, you'll actually get the rhino, so there's packs of Wait, cards. you have a full card system in this game? Yeah, to James, collect, you're speaking my language right stuff. now. Yeah. I love collect. cards in video games. Yep, and if you collect multiples, you can trade them all in, so there's different sets of cards for each planet and uh, weapons and things like that, Wait, too. do the cards actually unlock the weapons, or are they no, just you like, still it's will, like a collectible you, card game, It's like basically. a collectible, it's like okay. a collection, and you know, you get stats on your collections, and you're different sets and things like that and uh, it'll increase your drop rates and things like that for you get oh bonuses my gosh. for doing it. So there's just an extra little item to collect throughout the James, game as well. You guys just design I think when I think in the board meeting and Ted was, you know, sitting at the front of the table in his giant executive office, I'm assuming that he has, he was like, you know what we need to do is make a Cards. game. For Ryan Clements. Okay. It, specifically. You know how only much fun like him. Hearthstone, but with Ratchet and Clank would be? That would be. Oh my gosh, yeah, get out of town. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, went, I went down that rabbit hole for a long time. <laughs> Let me show you one other, I'll show you one other quick, cool polish thing that fans may. You know, so we've always had the weapon wheel. Classic, uh, pauses the action while you do it. Uh, but we know a lot of fans like the speed run or they like the play of the game and they don't always want to be like pausing it to switch between things. So sure. we added this D-pad quick select over here on the side. And so you can set this with four weapons you really want to use so awesome. that while you're running around and playing, you can just very quickly change between the weapons. It's beautiful. And, um, you know, it's something that I think will be really good for the uh, for the hardcore fans that, you know, play it a lot. Uh, and then let me I'll show you one other thing, too. So if you remember the old game, A, the level, weapons didn't level up in the first game. But we also now have the whole Raritanium upgrade system. So each weapon has its own sort of upgrade oh board. God. And so you can come in here and make your Zircons fire faster and make them, uh, you know, come with more shots and get more Raritanium and, th and collect more bolts when you use it. So you'll want to find Raritanium and go through. And as you can see, like, some will make holo cards show up more. So you'll get oh more holo cards. So if you if you are super into collecting the holo cards, you'll want to upgrade your proton drum. And James, grab are you those. kidding me with all this? Yeah, there's all sorts of cool RPG stuff. That, uh, are like there a, are there hardcore RPG fans on the Insomniac crew? Uh, I think there's be. definitely that thing where we always want to have like that progression so that you can always be you know getting a little bit better whether yeah. you're upgrading Ratchet's health or you're uh, collecting new weapons or um, um, this is the proton drum which kind of fires up this wave. There we go. Oh, that, that I, I don't reckon. Is that that's, that's weapon? What, nope, that's one of the new ones. That's one of the new ones. Yep. Beautiful. So I've got a couple new ones that uh, that would that would go really well with a rave or something. Yeah, right. You know? Like yeah. If, well, if you throw a Groovatron, you basically okay, have well, a, okay, a rave. A Groovatron and a Proton is kind of like we like to call that combo the rave in a box. <laughs> We don't actually call it the Raven in a Box, but did you just make that up I right now? Just make that okay. up. That was okay. called improvising. I really liked it. I would have never. You could have just let that linger, <laughs> and I would have never known. We would have gone on with our lives, and I would have never known that you made that up, right on the spot. And you know, we got classics like the. I love the flame effect on this. Yeah, that looks fantastic. I mean, the whole game. You know, the Insomniac crew is just. I would like to say renowned for its ability to to get that feeling of an animated movie, but having it be in real time in game Well, form. let me tell you something. Like, the PlayStation 4 is so powerful that we have all this capability to do some amazing stuff. In our stylized world, you know, we, we definitely know how to make the best of it, and we know how to make Ratchet art look good. We've spent, you know, a long time making Ratchet games, so that helps for sure. But, man, the power of the PS4 is awesome, and, you know, we're able to do this at 1080p, and the amount of, like, effects and lighting and motion blur and things like that that we can put on is just absolutely unreal and stuff, you know, we only would have dreamed of uh, on previous consoles. So it's it's pretty exciting to uh, to really be able to tap that system and kind of use its power. And I think our engine looks really beautiful running in it. So it's it really, really, really exciting to uh, see it. I appreciate the comment you just made about that it kind of also comes from experience and the fact that this team has been working on this series for so long. And I feel like that's often when you see developers really, really shine is when they, they're speaking from the heart and also from their head and their experience and their past experiences with the game. Yeah. And with the series. I mean, you have guys that have been working on this series since before the first game and worked on Spyro. And then you have other people, you know, that definitely came in, you know, early in the PS2 era. So we have some significant experience making yeah. Ratchet and Clank. And some serious talent. It, and it enables us to do things we, you know, that I think we can make a game so efficiently because we're so we just know what we're doing and i think that's really something special because we can get a lot more bang for our buck even just making the game and being able to make something really big and special for our fans and do it uh, oh there's that level yeah, up oh it feels so good every time and do it you know um and do it on you know a more limited budget and i think that's something that is uh 
kind of awesome uh, and really speaks to the talent of the team and just the experience and passion we have for creating Ratchet and Clank games. Yeah, beautiful. And I just love, I love how you're casually just dispensing all this chaos while you're talking about development. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's you get your Mr. Zircon out, and oh, look, I just picked up another get another card. Mm -mm -mm. And now it's like, hey, change your weapon, dummy. Oh, oh, now we got a tank. Oh, boy. You're handling yourself very well, though. Well, I mean, as long as it's not a timed running challenge yeah, from water, I'm yeah. fine. As long as it's ratchet not, combat. That's... As long as it's not a single slow-moving fish or a timed <laughs> water challenge, <laughs> James has it on lock. You know, it's really ever since Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on like the uh, NES, like the, the sewer levels always get me down. But once I'm out <laughs> on the streets, it's fine. <laughs> when, you, when you hit the streets. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, this is looking really. I mean, and I just, uh, I just want to play this now. We don't have long to wait either. I shouldn't even complain. It's not like I have to I wait mean, like April, months and months. It's April twelfth is. It's really, really exciting for us. Um, I, like I said, it's been weird. You know, you think about Ratchet and Clank. A Crack in Time came out six and a half years ago. So that's how long it's that been since we've mind. had kind of a full story-based disc, uh, Ratchet and Clank. We had, you know, uh, you know, had All for One, which is four-player, and you know, we had the side games, Full Frontal Assault, and Into the Nexus. And uh, if you haven't played Into the Nexus, you should. I think, uh, you know, it came out right after the PS4 did, so um, it kind of may have got a little lost for some fans in the excitement of PlayStation 4 launching. But um, we have, you know, even that was still, uh, you know, what two and a half years ago, almost, wow. or a year. So it's been a that's uh, so wild. It's been a while since there's been a Ratchet and Clank adventure, so it's going to be really fun. Just to get out there and have this game out there for all our fans and uh, and uh, you know PlayStation fans to play, and it feels like there's a lot of people that you know haven't played a Ratchet game in a while that are kind of looking forward to getting back on it. So that's something that's got us really excited too. Do and then you've got a movie oh. too. So I know it's, just, it's a great month for Ratchet. April is Lombax Awareness Month. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to uh, jump into another planet and just show it right before we end? So they already cleared this planet out before uh, we played, so we're not going to get to show a ton of it here. But uh, we can, we'll, this check, can, we'll check this out can the kind of be the nice final view that we take before yeah. we before we end our episode. I'll talk about this real quick though. This is kind of cool because you know we the movie and the game definitely were sort of made simultaneously, and so a lot of things uh, are combined or like you know work together. So for instance, you know. Drex Homeworld in the original game was this like poison planet, and then there was also the Robot Factory World Quartu, which is where uh, Clank was made, and we combined those. So you actually will see like it's this beautiful thing where you'll see the Robot Factory, and um, but it's the same polluted planet you see in the movie, and we you know brought all that art into the game. This is the Hall of Heroes, this building behind Ratchet here, and this area was an area that was created for the um, for the uh, game release or for the movie, and was a um, and is an important location because it's where the Galactic Rangers are based out of. So awesome. that was a location that never existed in the Ratchet and Clank universe. And um, we decided to, we replicated what they built for the movie in the game. And it's actually kind of interesting because if you saw, there's definitely a lot of Asian influence in that building. Um, and that's uh, the, kind of actually the first thing in the Ratchet and Clank uh in the Ratchet and Clank universe that is really inspired by Asian architecture. Most of it is kind of that, you know, 50s, 60s sci-fi. So it's kind of actually a fairly unique building in the Ratchet and Clank universe. And uh, I think that's pretty cool because there's definitely stuff, you know, where they took, the movie took the game models and up them and used our game models. And then we also took a lot of stuff that they created and concepts that they created for the movie and built it back in the game or Put got assets for the them game. put in the game. So there's yeah. assets traded back and forth from the game to the movie as well. That's a really cool collaborative process. Yeah, it was, it's really it was really fun and you know a weird thing. I don't think anyone's really pulled it off. Um, and I think I hope most of all, you know, there's been a lot of video game movies over the years that um, you know people didn't love. And you know, we'll see what people think of the movie when it comes out. But if there's one thing I'm really confident about is that if you're a fan of Ratchet and Clank, you're gonna love the film because it just is really really true to the universe and the characters. And so if nothing else, I think the movie that we made is. Uh, something that the fans of the series are really going to love and feels true to the game and the characters that they know. Well, you know what else I love? That Ratchet and Clank is coming to PS4 on April 12th. It's we awesome. did it, James. Yeah, we did it. Thank and you. <laughs> Just right in time, sort of. <laughs> right. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks and, for having us. Uh, yeah, Ratchet and Clank, PS4, April 12th, movie, April 29th. 29th in theaters. Lombax Awareness Month. Yep. Thank you so much for joining us on PlayStation Underground. We will see you next time. All right, later. Station.